there's the pandemic itself, which is, you know, confusing and scary and we don't want anyone to get sick. And that's, that's a, a worry for us. But I think on top of that is the fact that we don't have a unified view of what to do. I think that whenever there's a unified view of what to do, people relax into the stress of the situation and start to collaborate and have a lot of creativity and openness with each other. I remember I was in Australia once during a terrible flood and a flood is like a tangible thing, you know, like too much water, <laughs> you know, it's really obvious and it's finite. And the water was such that the grocery trucks couldn't get to the city. And so the grocery stores started emptying. And I remember being in the grocery store in these huge long lines and there being no bread left. And one person had like five loaves of bread and he was like holding them very miserly. And, um, and you could see he like looked around, realized there was no more bread, looked at everyone behind him and like his empathy was awakened and he like grudgingly like put some back. <laughs> and then the people around him were like really laughing because they could relate to being selfish like that and could relate to the embarrassment of, oh, right, other people need bread too, you know? And it was, it was so beautiful. And then when the flood finished, everyone was working together to clean it. And it was almost like there was a, a tragic element, but there was also a lot of playfulness and fun and community connection because you're all working together to solve a very obvious problem. Too much water must be cleaned up, <laughs> you know? Whereas with the pandemic, I don't know how unified everyone is in Israel about it, but in the United States, there's so much discussion about, should you have the vaccine or not have the vaccine? Should you wear the mask? Should you not wear the mask? Should we have things in person? Should we not have things in person? And people are not relaxed about whatever their opinion is. They're not kind to people who have a different opinion. And that makes it so much more stressful than if we just had a unified view of, we're all gonna do this because it seems like the best thing for now. We'll revisit if there's more information, you know, but we're not as unified about it. And so there's a lot of agitation about your approach to the pandemic and a lot of identity around, I am doing the right thing. I am a good person rather than just saying, this seems like the best approach given my limited knowledge, I'll just do this until I learn more. You know, there's not that flexibility of mind that I'd like to see. And then of course the isolation, even though people are online, it just, it does start to wear on you. And even if you're doing lots of things with community online, it's different to be in a room of people and hear them all laugh at the same time than to see a bunch of Zoom cubes, you know, united around a concept and smiling, it's nice, but you're not hearing the room fill with laughter. You're not feeling the ambiance of everyone meditating at the same time. And when you are having a cup of tea with your friend on the phone, you know, they can't like slap your shoulder and tell you you're being silly. You know, there's a lot of things that get missed um, that even if you're a Buddhist for 20 years, it's still you feel that like isolation of I'm lonely, but I'm not alone, which is totally different to when you're in retreat and you choose to be alone. You know, if you choose to be alone, then you're like full with your practice. But if you're still having to live and work and, you know, relate to people, but they're not with you, it, it drives you a little bit nuts. And we're starting to adjust to our Zoom cubes, but it's not ideal. <laughs> and so the problems of everyone is the problems that we're having. And Dharma centers, of course, are losing a lot of money from, you know, accommodation is where we make money because uh, we don't want to charge for teachings because the Dharma is priceless, therefore it should be free. And so we rely on donations and then we can charge for things that are like tangible, like a room and food and no one is buying those. And so all of the Dharma centers are struggling and uh, the end is not yet in sight. So um, it's a good lesson in impermanence and a good lesson in flexibility, but only on the days that we remember that. 